concerns over hairstyles have some soldiers claiming racial bias against some women. Fox 26's Chris Stipes is here now to break it down for us, Chris. Yeah, a lot of people talking about this, Melinda. Almost 20,000 people signed a White House petition about these new grooming regulations. Uh, not enough to get a response from the White House. You need 100,000 to do that. But there are still plenty of specifically black female soldiers that are concerned and, quite frankly, very confused about what they're supposed to do with their hair. This style is a natural two-strand twist. We're using her own natural hair. It's a popular hairstyle now banned by the Army. Why is this now not appropriate? That's the question stylist Tamika Fletcher is getting asked a lot these days by her Army enlisted clients. And I'm struggling to figure out what styles will be appropriate. New Army regulations just in effect this month ban most twists, large cornrows, and dreadlocks, styles worn mostly by black women. To be honest, a lot of people do feel like it could possibly possibly be racial profiling. The Army says it's all about uniformity among troops, and they're just clarifying what's already been banned for years. It's unfriendly, and I think it should be looked into again. Retired Colonel Marilyn Richmond Johnson wore a two-strand twist for 13 years during active service. But if she's in uniform, not anymore. If you're in a combat environment, there's not enough time to do that type of style on your hair that they're requesting you to have, like I have my hair now. Bottom line, Fletcher says most black hair is thicker and more curly than other races, and finding different ways to style it will be more time consuming, perhaps unhealthy, and downright difficult. Each one of them have really thick hair, and making a braid that's one fourth inch is almost impossible. Almost impossible. The colonel thinks if you still want to serve, you've got to follow the rules. This is just limiting the way you wear your hair, but I don't think it would be limited to the performance of any African-American female that's in the combat zone. And not only are hairstyles targets of new regulations, the uh, Army is also banning tattoos on the face, the neck, the hands, the fingers, the uh, lower arms of new recruits. So not just hair, uh, tattoos as well, which is pretty surprising. Okay, so a lot of people out there are saying, you know, rules are rules. It's the Army, you got to comply. What if some of these women, these black women, don't want to comply? Well, first and foremost, and you would probably know more about this in terms of go ahead and try to you yeah, know, use, you a, use a chemical relaxer. You pulled my hair earlier, you're like, you're like. It's very is, soft, by the way. It's straightened, it's chemically straightened. It's not like some of the women in but the the women we spoke to, it's very challenging for a lot of them because their hair is so thick. Mm -hmm. They say, we simply can't do this. And there's a lot about the size of the braids. It can't be any larger than a quarter of an inch. I mean, you think about it, is the Army really going to walk around with a ruler? And oh no, how are they going to enforce it? Uh, so you can either do that uh, and, and try to find a hairstyle that is acceptable. Or the Army says that if a soldier is unhappy, they can go through the proper channels through the Army and uh, voice their thoughts, whether that's going to lead to any changes. Probably not. You know, Chris Stipes, I love hearing you. You sound like an expert on hair right now. <laughs> you know, you learned I've been a lot, doing a lot of research the story all day, today. Yeah. You've got two daughters. Another question for you. Some critics, they say these regulations are meant to weed people out of the Army, and, and therefore it's reducing its size. What do you think of all that? You know, post 9-11, mm -hmm. you know, we got a lot more people in the Army, 570,000 over the coming years. It's going to drop down to about 420,000. So that is the talk, is that they're doing these things to get people to not be as interested, you know, because you don't really need as many troops right now with the wars over. And uh, uh, there's a lot of politicians, though, coming out and saying, what an insult. You know, you've served our country and you've sacrificed a lot. You risk your life and then this is how you're being treated. So there's a lot of different ways to look at it. A lot of talk about this on social media tonight as well. Indeed. Chris Stipes, thank you. Sure.